In today's video, to kick our week off with an absolutely brilliant start, I thought I would take the top 20 favourites to win the 2024 Coleman Medal and put them into a tier list based on their likeliness to win the Coleman Medal. I hope you enjoy. Comment below. Let me know what you think I got right, wrong, what you want to see next, all those good things. I love engaging with you guys into the comments, but most of all, enjoy. So here we are, as of yesterday, which will be Sunday, off the top of my head. Yes, Sunday, I know what day it is. Uh, these are the top 20 in order for the common medal race, according to Sportsbet. Now, this isn't financial gambling investment advice, none of that. This is just what I use to get the order, guys. Okay, So if you're looking at this list thinking, oh, I think this guy could win it, and he's not currently there, I mean, you've got yourself a bargain, but I'm not telling you uh, what to gamble on. It's just how I got here. Looking at the list of 20, I would be shocked if someone who's not on the list does end up winning it. But hey, like one of my tiers say, you never know. So we're going to do my pick. Now, I'm actually going to do my pick last. So I'm going to fill in the three tiers below it first. And then I will take someone out of the either contender or you never know and put them into the my pick section. So don't stress if you get to, hey, Daz, that was my pick and you didn't put them in the right thing. And we might end up agreeing. So stay till the end. There we go. And the other thing is, uh, my droid cam, which is my webcam that I use for my phone, is just not working for some reason. So I apologize if the actual me section in sort of the top corner of your screen there isn't of the greatest quality because it is my laptops at the moment. Although me in lower quality is probably a good thing. So what am I apologizing for? So, hey, let's get into it. I don't want to ramble on too much. Let's start with Charlie Kerno. Now, whatever you think of Charlie and where he's at, you can't deny that he is a big contender. Now, I can't believe he cropped criticism last year for winning it, even though he beat up on the bad teams, because what the hell else is he meant to do? You know, if he plays the, you know, West Coast, North Melbournes, and he only kicks one or two goals in those games, he's going to get criticized for doing terribly against bad teams. He kicks bags against them. He gets criticized that they don't count. So you can't win either way. What you can do, though, is kick bags, which is what he did, and he won it. So, big contender, not a whole lot to say here. Uh, Jeremy Cameron is an interesting one for mine. I am going to put him in there. Oh, you never know, but at this point, I'm not sure if big contender is the way to go. His ability to move up the ground, I think him and Tom Hawkins might take a few goals away from each other. And if you, anyone brings up 2008, that was the outlier, guys, of having Bud kick. I think it was 102 in the home and away season and rough head kicking. Uh, what rough kick in the home and away? 77? Is that right? Yeah, I'll have a look. I'll edit it down below, so it's fine. But yeah, you, you never know. But I just, I, I know Jez has won it in the past. I just, I, just, I can't, it's not that I can't see it. Otherwise, I'd put him in the can't see it tier. Um, but you never know. I would be shocked, but you never know. Okay. And to keep up the consistency of one per tier to start, how Tom Lynch is the third favorite for the Coleman medal is stupid. Now, regardless of what you think of Kane Corns, which is a video I still am pretty tempted to do at some point, because uh, I'm a bigger fan of Kane than I think the regular footy fan is, although, like anyone else, I think there is a, a little bit of um, intellectual duality with the way that he approaches his analysis of the game, but I couldn't be more in cahoots and more agreement with his analysis of Tom Lynch. He's barely running. He's just doing laps now at the moment, and we're at late Jan. Um, so, oh, mid to late, Jan, I suppose. So, to get himself right, you know, you got to get off to a good start in the common medal race, as we know. So, I just really can't see it. And Richmond's spine really does intrigue me uh, for this year. Noah Bolter doing a bit of training forward. Kaczynski doing a little bit of training back as well, which, of course, where he was drafted when the Hawks picked him up. I think he was the under-18s. All Australian fullback. But Tom Lynch for mine is, uh, I can't see him winning it. Straight up, I can't see him winning it. Uh, but Nick Larky, I can. Uh, big contender. Again, now, I just want to make something clear when I go through the big contenders list is these guys, I'm not putting them in an order on the tier list. So, for example, because we've got the first multiple, uh, I'm not saying Charlie's going to kick more goals than Nick Larky. I, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. It's as simple as I'm just putting them on the tier list. They're all equal. They're either all equally big contenders. They're all equally needing a big year, or I equally can't see people winning it. So before you comment going, this guy on the same tier as this guy should be swapped. I'm not predicting how many goals they're going to kick this year. 
It is as simple as, are they my pick? Are they a big contender? Do they need a big year? Or I can't see it at all. So everyone on each tier is equal, except of course for my pick. There are going to be sometimes on the tiers as well, guys that I think are going to kick more goals than guys on a tier above them. But I think of them differently. Okay, and what I mean by that usually will be the difference between need a big year and can't see it. Okay, we'll probably get to it when I get to that player, but there are going to be a couple of guys who are going to be on my can't see it at all list that I think can and maybe will kick more goals than guys on the tier above. It's not about how many goals I think they'll kick. It's their chances of kicking more goals than anyone else. So let's just make that clear. But Nick Larkey, he performed so well last year in, in such a bad situation. Of course, he has to be a contender. This is going to cause some controversy. I'm sorry, Crows fans. I love you in a big way. And yes, Taylor Walker was amazing last year. Are we going to back a guy in his 30s to do what he did last year, two years in a row, and go to another level? Because he's going to need 10% more goals. So is he going to be 10% better, or did we see the best from the Texan? I think I'm in the camp of we saw the best version of Texan. Now, does that mean that he's not going to kick 60-plus goals this year? If he plays every game, I think he's absolutely going to kick more than 60 goals this year. So keep that in mind. But can I see him winning the Coleman medal? No, I can't. So that's the way that we're rolling. Uh, Maxi King uh, will need a big year for mine. Um, you never know, but we'll need a big year. Everything would have to go right, which is pretty much what that tier is for. Um, but you never know. Uh, can I see him winning it? Is there a universe in which he can win it? Absolutely. Um, you know, he's got to fix up his goal kicking. I think St. Kilda's midfield need to play a little bit faster on grounds that aren't Marvel Stadium. Uh, but his accurate goal kicking is going to be the key. But hey, you never know, which is entirely the point of that tier. Uh, Oscar Allen, I'm putting in the contender bracket as well. For the simple reason of, yes, North, uh, West Coast were in as bad a situation as North last year. Um, but West Coast, I think, are going to get healthier. I don't know how much better they'll be, but they're going to get healthier. Which means Oscar Allen, hopefully, is not going to be as double teamed in the air. Now, considering how targeted he was last year by opposition defences, uh, can he get himself right? I think he's a contender. Okay. Um, yes, everything that you apply to Oscar Allen, you could say Nick Larkey's already done that, and I would completely agree with you. I really would. Uh, but Oscar now will be two years. Well, this will be his second season removed from a big injury, and we know what he was like first year out. So, a contender for mine. Uh, let's go to two meter Peter. And uh, I apologise, Essendon fans, but I can't I can't see him winning it at all. Um, it would not only need to be a career best year, but again, another big jump, which I'm not sure if we're going to see that. I think in order for Essendon to break this finals curse, they are going to need to diversify their goal kicking, uh, which is something that I think they can do and something they especially targeted last year in picking up Gresham. We, you know, uh, Jake Stringer's in a contract year, which means he's going to look like prime Dustin Martin for about six weeks and, and uh, clog up a lot of media articles which is going to be interesting. They're going to need more out of their small forwards. I think Archie Perkins can play a little bit of a deeper role at times, considering the the big midfield group that the Bombers have got. You know, you've got your Parrish, your, uh, your, Parrish, your Merritt, your Caldwell, your Setterfield. You've got Elijah Sardis, who will roll through there. Sure, Perkins will get some CBAs, but he'll need to do what I think Connor McDonald does at Hawthorne. I think that's the kind of role that he'll need to have this year. And don't worry, I also think Connor McDonald will need to kick more goals this year for the Hawks, so... I can't see two meter Peter doing it. If Essendon are going to be as good as potentially, I think they might be, which is really knocking the door on the eight, if not playing finals. Uh, Tomahawk, uh, I am going to put in the you never know section, uh, not in a case of him stealing goals in a, in a bigger way. I think he'll steal more off Jeremy than Jeremy will steal off him. And what I mean by that is that I think uh, Cameron can win it with Hawkins playing. I don't think Tomahawk can win it with Jeremy playing this year. Hope that makes sense. But hey, you never know. Hard to uh, hard to say, you know, I can't see him winning it at all. Um, if he did want to win it or if he cared enough to win it, he'd have to stop all the goal assists and the score involvements. Do I see him doing that? No. But like I say, you never know. You really never know what a player Tom Hawkins has been. I love that Jesse Hogan is in this discussion in a big, big way. Uh, but all in all, in honesty, I can't see him winning it. I think we've hit Jesse's ceiling 
at, at this point in time, and I don't think that will. And even if it does expand a little bit and he can keep up this pace, you know, maybe a little bit more in the next couple of years, maybe a little bit less, but around that mark, I don't think we're going to get the massive jump. I can see him win the Coleman medal. All right, Joey D. Amazing last year he was. I thought he was fantastic, and you never know. You really do never know. I'm not sure he's a massive contender, but you never know. Okay. I really like what he did last year. I really do and think that he can, you know, add to that a little bit. Does it mean winning the Coleman? That's a good... Actually, you know what? Stuff it. Let's follow our instincts. I'll put him in the contender category. Why can't he? Brisbane have still got to get better. They haven't peaked yet. Four points off a grand final. They're going to be really annoyed. Uh, I think there are going to be plenty of reasons you can come up with for Joey not winning it. Uh, but I think if Brisbane go to another level, they're still going to need that forward line mix to group uh, group to work well. And even though he's got Hipwood down there, uh, even though he's got Brandon Ryan, if the Lions want to play him and McInerney in the same side, he is still their best contested player in the air by a mile. So I think he's going to get chances. So there we go. Going away from... The instincts here. Let's go to a couple of Bulldogs. Aaron Norton and Jamara Eagle Hagen, who both belong in the You Never Know section. Now, I think Norton's going to win their goal kicking again if both of them play the same amount of games. I know there's some reports that Norton's working up the ground a little bit more, leaving Jamara at home, which will be interesting to see how that goes. But I still think Norton's a better contested mark. Jamara is, and I think the 10-year deal for Jamara is ludicrous. Not for the talent that he is, but 10 years for any player is stupid. Uh, and I thought the same thing about Bud's nine year. And you could argue that worked. Whether you think the f no flag is automatically a failure, but I don't think Sydney are worse off with Bud up there for nine years. So 10 years for Jamari is crazy to me. Genuinely crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't think either of them are going to be able to kick the 75 plus goals needed in order to win the Coleman. But hey, you never know. So I'm not willing to say absolutely no chance. But I'm also not willing to say that they are a huge contender. Uh, Mitch Lewis, for mine, is a contender for the common medal. He just needs to be fit. Play 22 games. Can I see him kicking 65 plus? Absolutely, I can. Can I see him kicking 70 plus? Ooh, I'd like it. But I wouldn't also complain if you went in the comments and went, come on, Daz, he hasn't played more than 15 games in a season. You might be being a little bit biased. I think both things can exist at once. I think you could argue either point to a place where I could probably agree with you. So, there you go. Ben King, he's also a contender for mine. Massive contender. Walt, Jed Waltz is going to help him enough that he's not going to take too many goals off him, enough to make a contest. And I think that both of those things work beautifully for Ben King this year. Fully fit, I think... It's going to be fantastic. Uh, Jack Rewalt won, I think, two common medals under Dimmer. Yes, they weren't in premiership seasons. We understand that. But Gold Coast aren't ready to win a flag. I think if there is a season where Ben King is going to be primed to win the Coleman, I think it is going to be this year. Uh, Darcy Fogarty, you never know. I've spoken about how I think uh, Fogarty needs to take over the Crows forward line this year and, and make it his with Taylor Walker as the number two. So you never know, maybe I'm right in that regard, um, but I, I could definitely see it. I really can, so I'll put him in the, uh, you never know. You never know, he could do it. Uh, Harry Mackay, I'm also putting, and you might think, I oh, can't see it, he won, he's, he won his Coleman with the least amount of goals. Uh, any Coleman winners, I think, won it with this century, uh, in the 21st century. Um, but I'm putting in the never, you never know section. There is sort of two lines of thinking when it comes to the way that uh, Harry played last year is this is who he is or this is as bad as it's going to be. And I'm firmly putting him in this is the ba as bad as it's going to be mentally between the goals. So he is hoping for a rebound. Uh, he is hoping for a comeback and you never know. He could surprise us. You never know. Uh, Toby Green, I just think history is against him. Age is against him. Um, you know, half forward flankers don't win the Coleman. So, sorry, Toby. You were amazing last year. In bloody credible last year. And I think you'll kick more goals than two blokes on the tier above you. But that's not what this tier list is about. So, uh, Joy Amos, uh, I'm putting in the can't see it. I just, the way that Freo play the game, I just don't think they're going to be able to give him the chances to kick an extra 25 goals. That'll let him win the Coleman. And that sucks because I bloody love Joy Amos. Okay? I really do. 
but I just, Freo's game plan does not leave me with any confidence they're going to be able to hit him up on the chest and give him away to get those 25 goals required to lift him. And Logan McDonald uh, kind of tempted to put him uh, in the you never know, but I, I don't think I can really see it either, which is a real shame. Um, but I just, again, the way that Sydney play, the way that he plays, the fact that he's not going to be the number two anymore, first year of being number one for him to go from that to 75 plus goals a year that will probably win you the Coleman. I'm not sure I can see it happening yet. And hey, who knows? He and Joy Amos might be the one two punch that lead Freo to their first flag if they decide to chase him, which I think they will. So that is the tier list. But who am I having as my pick? Now, the two that are in contention, biggest contention for mine, is either Nick Larky or Ben King. They're the two that stand out. Now, I know Charlie's won two in a row. No one's ever done three, I don't think, especially not in modern times. Uh, so history might be working against Charlie here, so Carlton fans, please don't get upset at me. And I can talk myself into Ben King in a big, big way, but for mine, my number one pick is going to be Nick Larky. North's midfield just needs to just somehow get a few more inside 50s because he can destroy defenders easily. And if he was as, as good as he was in such a bad situation last year and North should hopefully get a little bit better this year, he will be the shining light and I reckon he can get it done. But I do definitely think Ben King and Charlie Kono are the two that stand out from that second tier that could bump up. So that is my pick. Nick Larky wins the Coleman medal. And I've got plenty of contenders there. You never know. And a few of the top 20 that I would be staying away from in a big, big way. But what do you guys think? Comment below. Let me know what's wrong with my tier list. Who do you think is going to win the Coleman medal? Like the video. If you like the video, subscribe to join the Daz Talks footy family. Stay absolutely wonderful. You absolute legends. I can't wait for the next video. Hopefully you can't either. I'll see you later.